Hi, it's great to have you again in the How Do I series for Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 R2. My name is Vjekoslav Babic, I'm an NAV MVP and I have created this video for MSDN in cooperation with Platan Training Center in Belgium. At the end of this video I'll have a simple client extensibility control add-in. It won't do much, it will merely print the words Hello World, but it will do that for both the NAV client for Windows and the web client. The objective of this video is to show how to use a new feature in NAV 2013 R2, which is creating the extensibility controls that are compatible with both the Windows and the web client. I'll do this in five steps. In the first step, I'll create a control class library. In Visual Studio, I'll start a new project and I will choose Visual C Sharp class library and then I'll assign the name I'm just going to use Hello World. Then I'll click OK to create a new project. When the project is created, I first need to add a reference to the extensibility class library. So I go to Browse and I click the Browse button. And then in the World Tailor Client folder, I select the extensibility DLL. Let me show you the path to the World Tailor Client folder. It is the folder where the World Tailor Client is installed. Then I'll click Add and Complete, adding the reference by clicking OK. Now my class library can use this uh, extensibility class uh, library from NAV RTC client and I can uh, use it to create extensibility controls. Um, I'll delete the um, default class which was created automatically and I'm just going to create one interface. I'm going to call it uh, iHello World and uh, this interface will contain no methods, it will just be exposed so I'm going to use um, the attribute uh, which is a control add-in export to specify that this class, um, this interface is actually usable from NAV. Then I'll save and build my project. Then uh, I'm going to check the file which was created so uh, I'm browsing to Visual Studio Projects, Hello World, and then uh, bin, and then debug. And here I have my class library as a DLL. In the next step, I'll create the resource file. The resource file enables both the client for Windows and the web client to use the same control, which uses JavaScript instead of C-sharp and .NET to define its functionality. The first thing in creating the resource file is to create a manifest file. So I'll create a new XML file. Uh, it must be named manifest.xml. So I'm going to save it as manifest.xml. I'm going to click save and then I'm just going to put it into my project folder. I'm going to call it manifest.xml. This XML file contains the definition of the functionality. So uh, in the root it has the manifest tag and then I'm going to add, uh, use the script URLs tag to ref uh, reference external um, scripts. Uh, the script that I'm looking for is the uh, Ajax script for jQuery. So I'm referencing the URL for the jQuery and then I'm going to specify my own code. Uh, here in the script block I'm going to add a new C data block and here I'm going to define what happens uh, when the control loads. So I'm simply using the jQuery syntax here. I'm referencing the document and uh, when document is ready I'm going to fire an event which is going to be my new function. And within this new function I'm simply going to add a new tag for the hello world text. So I'm referencing the control add-in uh, ID. Um, every document which is uh, in the background created uh, by NAV 2013 is using this control add-in uh, div tag and to this div tag I'm going to append new text which says hello world. The next step is to create the resource zip file. This file contains all the files required by the control add-in and the only mandatory file in it is the manifest.xml file which must have this exact name. So I'll create this file by sending my manifest.xml into a new compressed folder file. Uh, I'll call it resource.zip and I'll use this file later when registering the new control add-in. 
The resource.zip file can contain more files to extend the functionality of the control add-in, which I'll explain in a separate video. In the third step, I'll deploy the assembly to the role tailored client add-ins folder. Uh, the first step there is to sign my assembly with a strong name. So I'm clicking properties, then signing, and then sign the assembly checkbox. In the choose a strong name key file, I'm selecting new, and then I'm going to type the key file name. I'm simply going to use the hello world name. I'm also going to switch off the protect my key file with the password checkbox. Uh, when I build my, uh, uh, my assembly now, it's going to be strongly signed, which is a prerequisite for assemblies to be used as extensibility add-in controls. So I'm browsing again to my hello world.dll. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it into the add-ins folder of my role tailored client installation. So here I'm going to computer, local disk, and then in program files I'm uh, looking up Microsoft Dynamics NAV 7.1 role tailored client add-ins and here I'm simply going to paste my DLL. I'm now ready to register the new control add-in in NAV. Before registering it, I must first determine its public key token. For this, I can use the strong name tool provided with the Visual Studio SDK. I can do it from the command prompt, but I prefer to use a post build event, which prints the public key token in my build output window, which makes it much easier to copy it and has me open fewer windows. So I'm going to click on build events property, and then in the post build event command line, I'm going to edit the post uh, build script. Here uh, I'm going to use the path to my uh, strong name tool. I'm just going to pa uh, paste the path to it. Uh, let me show the full path. So it's program files, Microsoft SDKs, Windows 8.0, bin, uh, net, fx, 4.0 tools. So here I'm going to uh, paste the path again and then specify that I'm using the strong name.exe or sn.exe tool. Uh, I'm using T, which stands for uh, showing uh, the uh, public key token. And here I'm simply referencing the name of the DLL. So I'm just going to uh, enter this target path mac uh, macro uh, into my post build event command line. Uh, when I build my uh, solution now and when I view my output window, uh, I can see that it has uh, the public key token uh, actually printed in it. Then I'll start my role tailored client for Windows. Uh, and there I'm going to create a reference for a new control add-in. Um, when my uh, client for Windows opens, I'm going to use the search box uh, to search for the control add-ins page. So I'm typing control add-ins and I'm starting the control add-ins page. Here I'm going to click new and then I'm going to use the control add-in name. It must correspond to the name used in my class uh, file, uh, actually in the control add-in export attribute. So I'm going to copy this value uh, and then I'm going to paste it into nav, into control add-in name field. Um, after this I must specify the public key token, which again I'm going to copy from the output window uh, and I'm going to paste it into the public key token uh, field. And that's it. Uh, the next step is to import the um, resource file. So I'm clicking on import and then I'm specifying the resource.zip file which I have created earlier in my hello world project folder. And then I get a message which tells me that it has been successfully imported and now I'm ready. In the final step, I'll create a page which consumes the control and then I'm going to test this page in both the NAV client for Windows and the NAV web client. So I'm starting my development environment and I'm starting uh, creating a new page. It's going to be a blank page and I'm uh, going to have a single container. I'm just going to assign a name to it and then I'm going to have a group. Uh, I'm simply going to call this group general uh, and then I'm going to create a new field control uh, which I'm going to use to consume my um, extensibility control. Uh, I'm going to specify the caption for this new control, uh, sorry, the name for this new control, uh, which is going to be the hello world. And then I'm clicking properties and I'm specifying the control add-in property. So I'm looking up to the list of all uh, control add-ins. Here I have my hello world control and I'm specifying that one. Uh, then I'm going to save the page. 
uh, I'm going to use 50001 and I'm going to call it hello world when I click OK I'm actually ready to um, test this page so I'm going to uh, look it up so it's 50001 I'm clicking run and here uh, I have my hello world page with, uh, which simply prints my hello world uh, text which is defined in the manifest file uh, I can try the same thing in the web client so I'm going to start uh, my web client uh, sorry uh, I'm going to start my browser and then I'm going to specify the URL uh, to this page so I'm specifying localhost uh, 8080 uh, dynamics nav71 web client and then I'm simply going to use blank.aspx and I'm specifying page 50001 when I run this, uh, my web client starts, and here I have my web page, which actually prints the hello world text. Thanks for watching this video about creating a simple client control add-in for Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 R2, which demonstrated the new feature of NAV 2013 R2, creation of extensibility controls compatible with both the Windows and the web client for NAV. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to seeing you again.